السلام عليكم انا اسمي محمد الصافي انا درس عشان graduated from the University of Khartoum in 1996 and uh, it's my first time actually to speak to an undead audience so I try to make it as uh, friendly as possible and not to be so boring so uh, bear with me here uh, I'm an assistant professor at University Washington University in St. Louis in the EMT department believe it or not <laughs> and uh, I was asked to speak about dental training in the uh, United States as part of uh, SAMA's objective to include uh, dental uh, graduates and dental students who are interested in uh, coming to the uh, United States or those who are already in the United States and helping them in the, um, building their career. Uh, dentistry in the United States is a four-year program uh, after uh, two, year, two to four years of, uh, of uh, college. So it takes six to eight years to get a uh, dental degree here in the United States, while in Sudan it was uh, five years after uh, high school. So um, dentists who receive their dental degree outside the United States and Canada are designated as international trained dentists or foreign trained uh, dentists. So everybody who gets his or anybody who gets his dental degree from outside the United States or Canada are foreign dental, uh, uh, foreign dentists. So for people coming from overseas, regardless of where they're coming from, once they are in the uh, United States, uh, they have multiple opportunities to pursue their uh, professional career in, in, in dentistry. And that's what I'm trying to focus on today what are the opportunities and what are maybe some of the, uh, the, the, the challenges. The first opportunity that everybody would be seeking once they are in the United States is to practice as a general uh, dentist. And you'll find, you'll see today that it's totally different than what you guys are used to uh, in medicine. And I just want to share with you uh, a personal experience. I remember when I was in uh, dental school back in, in Sudan, and I was in my fourth year, and then I knew I wanted to come to the United States, or everybody, I guess, wanted to come to the United States at that time. So I was trying to find out how and where to contact, and I remember one of my uh, classmates, and I actually forgot to thank, there are a few people that I really need to thank. One of the first one is Bashar Marouf, and he's not here today, luckily. <laughs> uh, so he, w he was uh, coming back from the States, so I told him, okay, I want to go to the States, and what, what do I need to do? And the only address that he had was the uh, US FMD, or was it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I wrote him a letter, put it in the mail in Sudan in the 90s, and came back in like, you know, four, three, four months that we don't have anything to do with dentistry. So I wrote him another letter, can you send me the address for it? So they sent me the ADA, the American Dental Association uh, website, so that I don't keep sending them letters. And that was the first. Uh, step in my uh, professional career in the United States. Uh, so as I said, once in the United States, the, more, the first opportunity that's available is to practice as a general dentist. And in order to practice, uh, obviously a license is needed in a state where you want to practice. Um, and then these licenses vary from state to state. So there, there are requirements per state. Uh, there are three general uh, state requirements that are needed in, in almost uh, all states or in the U.S. First would be the education requirement, meaning that you have to have a dental degree. And I'm sure that most of you are hoping all of you go to a dentist regularly, but you see that the initials behind the dentist name is either a DDS or a DMD, and uh, there is no differences. Most of the time it's a DDS. There are still some schools that are using the DMD mainly in the northeast uh, area. So that's the first requirement here in the United States to practice or to be licensed. You have to have uh, educational requirement, which is the dental degree. Uh, the second requirement is the National Dental Board or the National Board of Dental Examination. And this is a uh, this is a two-part exam, part one and two. Uh, it's a computer-based exam that's taken separately here. If you are in dental school here, you take part one when you're in the first or second year and then you take part two before you finish your uh, dental school. 
the third requirement is the clinical examination, and this is a state or a regional testing uh, agency, depending on which state or which region in the U.S. you want to practice. So basically, these are in order. So you need to have your dental degree first. When you, part of your dental degree is the national board exam, and then once you finish your dental school, then you have to have you have to take the the regional test or the state test, the, the state clinical exam, and these are patient exam. You have to bring your own patients to take the exam on them and before you get the, the license. So these are the three general license requirements. The American Dental Association is the main body that controls or recognizes the pre-dental and the post-dental uh, education here in the United States. They have different offices. Uh, the Commission on Dental Accreditation, also known as CODA, is the one that recognizes the pre- and post-dental uh, education. The Joint Commission on National Dental Examination is the one that administers the, uh, the board exam, the part one and, and, and part two exam. So this is the main uh, body here. So obviously, somebody coming from overseas, they don't have a, uh, a recognized dental degree or accredited from a uh, accredited dental school. So um, there are graduates of programs that are not accredited by the CODA and then Still, there are now uh, about 33 programs or 33 dental schools here in the United States who accept international dental graduates. And I'll, we will talk in a minute about what does this mean. Uh, these programs are known as advanced standing programs or international dentist program. These programs, they allow individuals or the applicants to be admitted or dentists to be admitted into the dental school and then they recognize their previous dental degree that they have. For, for, for example, I, was, uh, I came from Sudan, so I had already have a dental degree, but in order, the first step to get a license is you have to have an American dental degree in order to be licensed. So this is the, the most of the time, this is the, the first step. So basically the applicant goes back to school for two, year, two, two years mainly uh, to receive a DDS or a DMD. That's, that's the, the first step. So in summary, to get uh, to know the requirements before you get a license as a general dentist, and that's the first opportunity, is you need to determine which state or states you want to practice, which region in the United States you want to practice in. And then you need to get your uh, certificates or your diplomas from Sudan evaluated and there are diff different uh, bodies, but mainly the ECE is the one that determines the, um, the evaluation and the eligibility for the, for the exam. And, and I remember in, in our time, we graduated from the University of Khartoum, the results were in the pass-fail uh, uh, format, so they needed to be converted to a GPA format because that's a, the, uh, the American system in order to be recognized and, and, and uh, before you can apply for the, uh, for the board exam. You also need uh, to take the TOEFL and then the National uh, Board uh, Dental Exam Part 1. That's the, the, uh, the main requirement. Some programs do require uh, Part 2 also. And then the next step is to uh, apply to a dental school that have the advanced standing or the international dentist program. They, uh, they are pretty much the same the advanced standing program, as I said, dental school here is four years. So some schools that have the advanced standing program, they will put you in the third year of the, uh, the dental school. So you're, you're joining the same class with the traditional uh, students, and then you do the third and the fourth year, and then you finish your dental uh, uh, school and get your dental degree. That's the advanced standing program. The international dentist program, other schools have separate programs for international dentists. So you have your own classes and your own clinic and your own lab separate from the, from the uh, traditional class. Once you finish the program, then you get your uh, DDS or DMD, and then you need to pass a clinical uh, licensing exam, and that's uh, what I said, the, uh, the state or the regional exam of, of the state where you want to practice. And then you need to complete the, uh, the state dental board application plus any uh, other requirements that are required by the state where you want to practice. And then once you get all that, you get your license, then you practice either as an associate in a private practice or a partner of that private practice, or you can open or start your own, your own practice. So there are different, as you see, there are uh, steps, but once you do all these steps, then you can achieve the first opportunity available, which is to practice as a general dentist in the, uh, in the United States. As you see the difference, there is a huge difference 
between what you guys are used to going through the UCMLE and directly to a residency versus what we have to go uh, through to get a license. And obviously, you know, going back to school, that's a huge amount of uh, expenses that has to be paid as tuition fees and living expenses and, and, and time given to the, uh, to the programs. There are a few states that will um, uh, accept foreign dentists for specialty programs. Meaning that once you're here in the United States, you can apply directly to specialty programs and, 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 and there are different specialties that we're gonna go over in a minute. And, and once you finish the specialty program, you could be eligible for license after the completion of the, of the, of the uh, specialty program. So there are a few uh, uh, universities or dental schools that will accept foreign graduates. The applicant, they need to contact, because these requirements change, or these uh, schools change from time to time. Sometimes it's open for a few years and then they close it for whatever reason. If they have few uh, local applicants, then they open it up for, for uh, international dentists and they can take them directly to the uh, uh, specialty program. Uh, and we have uh, posted this information on uh, Sam's website with all the links that uh, uh, could help the applicants. The second opportunity is to join a specialty program, uh, as I mentioned, and there are nine ADA recognized dental specialties, and these are uh, public health dentistry, and this is the, uh, the only non-clinical uh, specialty. All the others are clinical specialties. Uh, in the dental, I'm just going to go over and try to explain it for you uh, this a little bit, just to make it simple. Uh, in the dialects, is the specialty in dentistry that deals with the root canal treatment. If you have pain, then you go and have uh, root canal narrowing called dialect resort. Most of the most people know that uh, in the uh, The third specialty is oral maxillary pathology, so it's basically pathology, but only in the uh, uh, head and neck area. And then radiolo head and neck radiology, or oral maxillary radiology. Uh, uh, oral maximum patient surgery. Uh, these are very uh, clear. Orthodontics is the specialty that deals with uh, braces, mouth positioning of teeth, now especially with Invisalign. As most people know uh, orthodontics now or mainly braces. Pediatric dentistry, uh, very clear. Periodontics is the specialty that deals with gum disease or gum problem. And then the final specialty is prosthodontics, and that's uh, my dental specialty, which is mainly uh, dental reconstruction. If you're missing teeth, like crown bridge, veneers, uh, dentures. So any replacement of missing tooth structure is this uh, prosthodontics. So the specialty programs that accept international dentists, and that's again, is uh, posted on the ADA website, and we also posted the link on uh, Salmon's website. So for applicants, they can go and verify this information um, on, uh, on each state. So they post the information that each university have, you see the abbreviations uh, that have the, the specialty program, and these are the universities that would consider accepting international dentists directly to, uh, to these programs. And some of these programs, as I said, they uh, consider admitting graduates of international dental schools, but most of the time, especially for international dentists, it's up to the program director, depending on how many spots they have. And I, believe it or not, I do I do get a lot of calls now from from uh, program directors that we have an open spot. Do you have anybody? Do you know anybody that want to you know do prosthetics? Because my specialty is prosthetics, uh, and I do know a few uh, program directors. So I do get some phone calls sometimes that there are openings in in in, in, the, in the program, or some of them because they're, by now they're used to you know me calling and say, oh, I have a friend of mine, you want to do this and you want to do that. So we do try to help some of our dental uh, colleagues here. And then as I said, completion of the specialty program allows the candidate to satisfy the state's educational requirement. Remember, we went over the requirements. There are three requirements. Number one, what the educational requirement. So by doing a specialty program, some states consider uh, people who finish the specialty program as part of the, the, uh, as the educational requirement, but they still have to take the national board dental examination, which is the exam requirement, and they still have to do the clinical exam before they can get the license in, 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 in that state. But you got a, so that means 
You don't have to go back to school for two years to get a license and, be, and become a general dentist. You can do a specialty program in some states and then do the national board exam and the clinical exam and then practice as a specialist. So you see the difference? Either to practice as a general dentist or to practice as a, uh, a specialist. The reason that I, when, 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 when we came, and I say we because we came at the group like four or five people together at the same time, uh, is because of the huge discrepancy between the training in the Sudan at that time and in the States here. So as a group, we decided that we want to go back to school for two years at least to get to the level that would allow us to practice here in the United States. And then from, from, from that point, some of us chose to go to specialty uh, programs. Some are uh, practicing as uh, general dentists, and I see a couple here today. So I don't know if you guys know there are two dentists here today as part of the group. And hopefully, inshallah, we'll get some more. And uh, maybe there are more, but uh, I, I know two. When we graduated, in, when I graduated in 96, there was only one dental school in Sudan, which is the University of Khartoum. Now, alhamdulillah, there are more than 12 dental schools in, uh, in Sudan. So there are more people coming out of dental school. The third opportunity is to join a non-recognized dental specialty. Uh, some schools offer advanced dental education programs in areas like basic science, biomedical sciences, and other dental practice areas. These areas will include uh, dental anesthesiology, dental materials, implantology or implant dentistry, operative dentistry, and then other basic science areas. So these are uh, dental specialties that are not recognized by the American Dental Association as part of a clinical specialty, but they are still uh, uh, dental specialties. And then depending on the program, so, uh, some of these programs, they, they give a certificate or a master degree or a PhD degree once, once these programs are finished. And then these programs do not meet the state's education requirement for the license, and that's why there are, not, there are none recognized specialties. So there are specialty programs, but they will not give you a license to practice uh, dentistry because mainly they, are, uh, they don't meet the, the educational requirements. But still, it's a, a, an option, and you can easily find a job after you do these programs. And then the they fourth uh, opportunity that people can uh, pursue here in the uh, United States is to practice as a hygienist. And a, a hygienist is a, a dental therapist that does the uh, cleaning when you go. They have to work under the dentist supervision. And um, if you go to a dentist every six months, you most likely see the hygienist. They, they check your teeth and clean your teeth. And then the dentist would come in and, 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 and uh, do the final treatment planning if there is any other work that needs to be done other than the, the cleaning. And at the moment, Florida is the only state that would allow international dentists to sit for the hygiene uh, uh, clinical exam. Because to become a hygienist here, it's a two to four year bachelor degree. Uh, it's offered in community colleges and some dental schools. And they have their own board and they have their own board, uh, board examination. So Florida is uh, allowing international dentists to sit for the hygiene uh, uh, program. And the requirements, as I said, is to have an international dental degree and then to sit for the National Board uh, Dental Hygiene Exam, which is a written exam or computer-based exam, and then to, do the, to take the Florida Clinical Hygiene Exam to get the hygiene license. But by doing that, you can only practice as a hygienist in Florida. This is, uh, you cannot practice in any other state, and that's at the moment. And, and it might change in in a year or two, hopefully that there will be more states that uh, that's allowing that. The uh, final opportunity or group of opportunities available is uh, for international dentists is to pack, to work in the dental industry uh, or dental education, and these would include dental manufacturing companies, dental supply companies, and dental pharmaceutical companies. So it would be as a, a representative for these companies that go around in different offices and, 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 and sell or in the conventions uh, um, marketing the products of these companies. Another opportunity also that's kind of uh, overlooked is to teach at the university or community college dental uh, programs. And there are also university-based research programs 
and then there is there are positions like dental assisting and uh, dental lab uh, technicians. And based on my own personal uh, statistics, uh, as of uh, 2011, and the people that I already know, believe it or not, there are 22 licensed dentists from Sudan in the United States. 10 of them are in general dentistry, and then 12 of them are in, uh, in different specialties. Um, so you can see that, alhamdulillah, there are a lot of uh, people from Sudan in different uh, specialties here, and uh, alhamdulillah, this has been just over the past 10 years or so. Most of these people, maybe only one person that I know who's an orthodontist that has been here for over 20 years, but almost all these people have been here only for 10 years and alhamdulillah they achieved all these uh, achievements and now they are licensed specialists or licensed dentists in different uh, uh, parts of the uh, country. So we're hoping inshallah by you know, these dental specialists or dentists joining SAMA that they're able to provide service to people who are maybe already here in the United States or people who are planning to come to the United States from Sudan or other parts of the world. And also for these people to network together because unlike you know medicine in dentistry, if you are practicing in a private practice, you know, with the economy and all the things you need to move from one state to another in in, in, in few years or so. And this will broaden you know some objectives and provide assistance to uh, dental applicants who are either here or, or back home and I do get a lot of you know calls and emails and I'm sure that my friends here too they get a lot of calls and, and, and emails from people in Sudan especially now with the 12 dental schools and people are uh, still interested to come to the United States and pursue their, their professional career here so Tama would provide a very good platform that all these people can meet together and get all the information. And most of this information, or actually all of this information is posted on, on Sam's website. And we are, inshallah, in the by next year we're planning on getting maybe more specialists or have a dental uh, group and uh, communicate through the, app, for, uh, through the applicants, through Sam's website to give the information to the applicants, inshallah. So these are the areas that are uh, planning to give service to the general guidance for visa requirements or what type of programs, which states accept uh, uh, foreign graduates, and then also the application process, which is pretty similar to the USMLE process, and then the national board exam, and then also the the same thing that uh, they were talking about uh, now, the CV and the personal statement would also apply here, and then. Um, tips on uh, interview process and as I mentioned uh, I, I don't know how it is in, in, in medicine but in dentistry most of the time it's up to the program director there is still a coordinator and everything but it's a program director so if you have a good recommendation and the recommendation could be a phone call or could be uh, a recommendation letter that has a very high uh, advantage on, on the, uh, the application and I would like to welcome you all to uh, St. Louis, inshallah. If you are uh, planning to come to St. Louis, uh, it's a very nice city. I've only been there for one year now, but it's very nice, especially in the summer time. Thank you so much. Thank you.